Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And in this one we're going to be looking at what you see on the screen which is controlled dynamics. What we're using here is an Expresso expression to add force to the cubes. So the sphere is being looked at by the expression and its proximity to the cubes is being sensed. That's what we're doing here. And once it gets close enough they are thrown into the air as you can see here. That's what we're going to be doing and we're going to be using a couple of nodes that we've not looked at before, namely the dynamics proximity and the dynamics body state. And they're going to be the key players in making all of this work. That's what we're going to be about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. We'll start by bringing in a cube and in our sizes make it 20 by 20 by 20. We'll also fillet it and I'll make the fillet radius just one and we'll leave the subdivision at three. We'll drop this into a cloner. So grab a hold of one of those with the option key held down and our cubes in the cloner are ready to go. We want a count of two by one by 10 because a grid is what we're going to be using. So that's fine. We don't need to change the mode. The sizes, we need 45 by 0 by 21. And that gives us our two rows of cubes already in set up and waiting. Moving on from here, we'll bring in a sphere. We'll give it a radius of 10 so that it's about the same size as our cubes. Just move it over here. And I'll add 60 segments just to make it nice and round. We can leave the type as standard. It doesn't matter really what this is because this is going to be a keyframed object anyway. It will be dynamic, but we'll keyframe it. OK, fantastic. So we've got that far and now we can think about adding some dynamics. I think another thing we'll also do before we do the dynamics, actually, what we'll do is move the cloner up. We'll just move that up by 10 and we'll move our sphere up by 10 in the Y. And then we'll bring in a floor. So let's just bring one of those in. And now our cube and our sphere or our cubes and our sphere are sitting on the floor. So we'll start with the dynamics from here. Let's get a collider body for the floor. We can leave that as it is. We don't have to touch anything in there. And the next thing to do is bring in a dynamics collider body for our sphere too but we will need to do some work with this now obviously we don't need anything applied to children and individual elements can be switched off the shape we need to make a static mesh and we can leave everything else the same and now we can animate this by keyframes so that's fine so with our sphere selected we may as well do that now actually what we'll do we'll make ourselves a little bit more time by giving ourselves 150 frames. So that's fine. We've got that set up. Now we can think about moving this sphere. So along its position Z, we can record its initial position and then we'll move along and we'll go to about 90 frames. And we'll move our sphere to the other side of our cubes somewhere to just there will be fine. And now if we run the timeline, we can see that that's all working fine. So we've got our first object moving as it should. Now our cloner here, we do need to give a bullet tag as well. We'll give this a rigid body tag. And we can look at this and see what we need to do in here. Well, as it happens, we can leave everything we see here exactly as it is. We don't have to change a thing. It's all going to work. The next thing to do then is to bring in a null, name it Expresso. We'll give it the Expresso tag. We've got our editor open and we're ready to start work. The first thing to actually do is drag in the cloner. And at the output stage, give it an object port. We can also bring in a sphere. And at the output stage for this, we'll give it a global position port. So we've got those two ready to go. The next thing we need 
is the dynamics proximity, which we've not used before. So we come down to bullet and we choose dynamics proximity and bring this in. Now, this is quite a powerful node, a number of different things that we can plumb into here at the input and output stage. We do need the point input and we need to connect our global position from our sphere into there. And we also need an object port, which we can just open this up and place that at the top. And we can plumb our cloner into there. So our cloner is going to feed in our cubes. And we're going to then check the global position of the sphere with the nearest point of our cubes. I mean, it's going to, I think it's going to be working with the center. So it literally is taking the center of this and comparing it with the center of this. It's kind of, a, as we've done with Python, it's, it's actually a distance vector that we're looking at there, I think. OK, so we've got our position port at the output stage here. Let's just get this back to 100%. We've got the position port at the output stage and we also need an object index as well. So we're going to bring one of those in. And that sets up our proximity. Moving on from here, I'm going to bring in a modulo. So come down to calculate math. We've got it set up as an add. We need to change the function to a modulo. And it will be modulo 2 in input 2. And then we'll simply plumb the index value or the object index value into input 1. You'll see what we're going to do with this in a minute. So I'll move on from here and bring in a condition. So we'll bring in a logic condition and plumb the output of our modulo into the switch. Now our two inputs, first thing we need to do is change the data type because we actually need this to be a vector. And then we can think about what we're going to be doing down here. Now, as the sphere approaches the cubes, what I want them to do when they leap into the air, I want them to move upwards and I also want them to move towards each other so that they actually meet in midair, hit each other, and then we get a bit more of a sort of chaotic dynamic simulation. That's what I'm going for here. So. In our first field here, I'm going to place 10 in there and 70 in the second field. So in the X, I want them to move. And this this will be this cube here. If we go into our cloner and go into the transform tab, we can show our indexes. So we can see that this is cube zero. Now, with our modulo, what we're going to be doing is switching between these two inputs. So we'll start with zero, switch to one and then keep on repeating the process. That's what we're going to do, OK, using this modulo. So I've said 10 here. So this is going to move 10 in the X and it's going to move 70 in the Y. Or at least these are going to be the forces. They're going to be force values. They're not going to actually be position values. They're force values. That's the way we're going to be using these vectors. So down here, I'm going to say minus 10 and once again, 70. So these odd number cubes are going to be moving in a minus direction in the X and obviously still a plus in the Y. And with the Z, we're just going to leave it zero. They don't need to do anything in the Z. We don't want them to move backwards and forwards. So that's that set up and ready to go. The next node to bring in is the dynamics body state. So once again, we'll come down to bullet. We'll choose dynamics body state state, which is the top one here. We've got a number, we've got dynamics connector state, and we've also got spring state, but we're interested in the body state. So we'll bring that one in. The object port, we can plumb our cloner into there because we're interested in the dynamics body state of our cubes. That's what we're really interested in. OK, so we're ready to go from there and we can add some more ports. We need once again an object index port. So we'll bring one of those in. And the index from the object index port here can be brought into there. So we'll plumb that in. Just move these two down so that we can see what we're doing. And then the final point, the port that we need is the add force port. So we need to add force. And as I said, we were going to use these vectors. These here are going to be used as force values. So we can plumb those in 
from this output. That's fine. So that is our first part of this expression set up. If we just go back into our cloner here, we'll turn off the display. We'll set that back to none. And let's just see what happens. And straight away, we can see that our cubes are flying up into the air. And they're going to crash down and land. But you can see they're still flying around. Now, the reason for that is because we need to actually switch this Espresso expression off at a certain point. And that's going to be our next task. So let's just make the window a little bit bigger. We'll bring in a time node. That's a sound node. I don't want one of those. Get rid of that. Bring in a time node. That's one of those. Get rid of the time port and give it a frame port as per usual. I'll grab a hold of a compare. Plumb my time nodes output into input one. And we'll say is greater than And we'll say, as a starting point, 60 frames. In fact, what I'll do, I'll say greater than 90 because I moved my sphere to a position that I actually think it needs to be in. So I'll say greater than 90 for this. So as soon as our sphere has, has reached its final destination, we're going to switch the Espresso expression off. So I'll bring in the Espresso tag and in our basic properties, we've got enable. We'll select that. Now to switch this off, I actually need a not because the output of this is going to be one once the condition has been satisfied. Now, this will be switched off if it's passed a zero. So we need a not. Let's bring one of those in. And we can just place this between the output of the compare and the input of the Espresso node. And now let's see what happens. We'll just close this down briefly. Up they go, down they come, and they come to a final resting place. We probably need a few more frames, actually. We'll give ourselves 200 so that we can see the whole animation. Let's just fly this through again. But we can't. And the reason we can't is because our expression is still disabled. So that gives us a bit of a problem, doesn't it, really? So what are we going to do about it? Well, the easiest solution is to get another Espresso tag and make a second expression. And all we've got to do here is bring in this Espresso tag at the input stage, select Enable. Once again, we need a time node. So we'll get one of those, just bring this in. Same deal as before, delete the time port, add a frame port. Get another condition, or rather compare, I should say. And this can be left as equal to, and it will be equal to zero because that's what we want to know. So when our frames are equal to zero, we're, we're at the start of the animation, then we want to enable the second Espresso tag. And that's all we, can, we need to do. We can just simply plumb this in here. And now we should find that we're okay. So let's see what we get now. And there we go. We've got our animation and it's running fine. And it starts again once we loop round back to zero. And that is how you use those two very important nodes that we've just seen in order to make things fly up into the air. So these two here, the dynamics proximity and the body state, they're the two key nodes, as I said. They're the ones that make this happen. But yeah, that about does it. That's it. That's what we've done in this tutorial. That's what I wanted to show you. And that's how you go about doing it. So, you know, always bear these two nodes in mind. They're very powerful and a huge amount of different things you can do with the body state here. You know, tons and tons of things that we, we can explore probably in other tutorials. Uh, I shall definitely be coming back to these two and seeing what I can do elsewhere. I mean, it's what you could do possibly is use some dynamic constraints. I mean, instead of these being cubes, they could be gates, couldn't they? And you could have them on 
you know, dynamic constraints, maybe hinges or slides or, you know, something that would actually prevent them from just flying up in the air at random. And when the sphere or possibly a car or whatever object you choose to bring towards them is, is in the correct prox proximity, they could actually raise up in the air or they could hinge somewhere here and just sweep out of the way. And then when the object, whatever it may be, has gone past them, they can drop back down into place. You could do something like that, maybe. So there you go. There's a challenge for you. See if you can perhaps build something like that. But anyway, that about does wrap this tutorial up. So as always, I really hope you've enjoyed this one and that you've got some more inspiration for your own projects from it. And uh, if you do do anything exciting, please let me know what you've done. And if you have enjoyed the video, then please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, then please, please do share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that just about brings the curtain down on this one. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.